All right, let's get it. How's it going everyone? Coach Avi here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to get a Division 1 scholarship. So obviously this is for the NCAA Division 1. This could apply for Division 2. This could apply for NAIA as well. So it's not just about Division 1 and it's not just about getting a scholarship, but also some good information if you don't get a college scholarship to still be able to get a roster spot on a team. Five tips that I think are gonna be useful. But before we get into the tips, please, if you guys find this information useful, if you guys have seen some of the other videos on my channel and you guys like them, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and thumbs up this video because that really, really helps. And as usual, if you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, anything that you might want me to do as far as topics for our future videos, go ahead and write them in the comment section down below. But without further ado, let's get started. So we're gonna try and keep this video nice and short, straight into tip number one, skill level. So this is a given, this is an easy one. You have to be at the division one level if you wanna play that. It doesn't matter how many connections you have, unless the head coach is your mom or your dad, you're not gonna get a scholarship from anyone, even if it's your best friend, you're not gonna get a scholarship if you're not able to play at the division one level, if you don't meet the minimum standard of being there. Scholarship money is very limited, so you have to make sure that you're playing in a good team prior to going to that division one school. And on top of playing in that good team, you have to have good statistics statistics as well. If you're not scoring goals, if you're not making saves, keeping clean sheets, whatever your position entails, you're not going to get recruited and you're not going to get a scholarship. And on top of that, you also have to have a very good highlight video. So we'll save that for a little bit later, but if you don't have a good highlight video, it's going to be very difficult to get into a division one college soccer program, let alone get a scholarship. Tip number two, you have to be a salesman. So think about yourself as a product. The coaches are looking at all of these different products, all of these different players in front of them. When they're recruiting, they have to figure out which one is the best and where is best for them to spend their money. So maybe I can give this person 5,000, maybe this person's worth 10,000, maybe this person's only worth 500. You have to pitch yourself in a way that makes you attractive and makes you valuable. So in order to do that, just like a car salesman, you have to be out there, you have to be social, you have to be outgoing. You have to be the one that initiates the contact, initiates the communication, and even when the communication feels like it's dying, you have to find creative ways to keep it going. So if you reach out to a coach via email and they don't email you back, instead of giving up, you have to keep emailing them them until they give you a response. Eventually they might say, okay, let's take a look at your highlight video. Now I'm interested. Or they might say, I'm sorry, but you don't fit the profile of the player that we want. This isn't going to be a good fit, but at least you got a response and at least you got your name in the back of their head. So think about it like product advertising when you see it on TV. For example, if I take out this Monster energy drink right here. You guys see this logo at gas stations. If you're watching a lot of television where they have action sports, Monster's one of the biggest sponsors. It's in a bunch of different places that you don't really think about, but you know that logo because you've seen it before. The idea isn't that you're gonna get an initial response right away. If, if I see that logo, that doesn't mean I'm gonna go ahead and buy a Monster right away. But if one day I'm feeling like I'm low on energy and I wanna go get an energy drink and I'm not really sure which energy drink to buy, because I've seen that logo everywhere, it's already in the back of my head that's gonna be one of my top options right away because I'm like, hey, if I've seen that name so many times, so many different places, then that's probably a good option. So that's exactly how it is when it comes to you advertising yourself as a product. If you can consistently keep an open line of communication and your name keeps popping up in their emails, in their text messages, in their phone calls, maybe even in their social media, they're gonna remember that name. Now, the more coaches that you reach out to and the more coaches you have constant conversations with, the more your name is gonna pop up when coaches are talking about possible recruitment options. Now, kind of going off track on that, if you are gonna message them on social media, for example, you're gonna DM them on Instagram, make sure that you're staying as professional as possible and you talk to them like you would talk to them in an email and also make sure that your profile doesn't have anything dumb on it, anything stupid, anything that can raise a red flag because the first thing a coach is gonna do is they're gonna click on your profile, they're gonna look at your pictures, they're gonna look at your posts and if they see something that they don't like, they're probably not even gonna message you back. So keep it professional regardless of whether you're on social media or obviously you're just sending them an email or a text message. But as much as people hate salesmen because they're a bit annoying, they're a little bit pushy, that's kind of how you have to be in order to get your name out there amongst the uh, the huge pool of other soccer players who are also trying to get recruited. Tip number three, maintain a high GPA and good test scores. So academics are crucially important, more so because if you think about it from a scholarship viewpoint, coaches have a very limited amount of money in their sporting budget. So for example, I might get only $100,000 
for my entire program. If your grades are really good and your test scores are really good, when you get admitted into the school, the first thing the coach is gonna do before they even look at how much money they're gonna take out of that 100,000, they're gonna go into the school's budget and they're gonna talk to academics and they're gonna say, okay, how much money can you give them based on their grades from the school's funds as opposed to from their coaching funds? And the school's gonna say, okay, well, their grades are so good that we're gonna be able to give them 75 to 80% of the full tuition. So automatically, 75 to 80% of that scholarship money is coming from the academics and the school side. The coach hasn't even begun to touch their $100,000 in uh, scholarship money. So going back to the reference that I made of you being a product, think about it as if you're putting a huge sign on yourself that says on sale, right? If you look at two products and they're the exact same product, same player, same position, and one of them says 75% off and the other one's at list price, which one do you think the coach is gonna pick? So moving on to tip number four, it's mandatory to have a highlight video and a resume. I know the COVID pandemic has affected a lot of players because they might not have as much footage or any footage at all because their seasons got canceled, their seasons got shortened. Try to accumulate highlight footage from as many years as you possibly can. So if you can make a highlight video that's a total of maybe three to four years of footage, you're not only gonna be able to pick what clips you wanna put in there, but you're also gonna be able to make multiple highlight videos. And this is important because in the initial message, what you wanna do is you wanna give them a shortened version of your highlight video. So this is your top plays, the best of the best. You're gonna give it to them in a shortened highlight video that's maybe three to four minutes just to get their interest. Once they realize, okay, this is a good player, this is someone I might want into the program, they're gonna want more highlight videos. So that's when you give them maybe a 10 minute or a 15 minute cut of your highlight video where you add a lot more plays. It might not be as good as your, your top of the line one, but it's gonna still showcase a lot of your skills. And you also wanna have full game tape or full game footage as a backup. So have those stored somewhere so you can pick them out quickly because they might ask for an entire game so they can analyze how your performance was over 90 minutes. But once they ask for that, then you know that they're interested and you know that they're close to making a decision as to whether they want you or not. So when you send them your highlight video, you also wanna include a little resume. Make sure that you don't put any subjective attributes or skills. So for example, I see a lot of players who put good with both feet, quick, very good teammate, can play multiple positions. Things like that are completely subjective and they're just your opinion. And obviously, if I think I'm a good soccer player, of course I'm gonna feel like all of those things fit me. However, the only opinion that matters is the coach that's trying to recruit you. Don't waste their time putting any of that subjective stuff out there and only give them the stats, the numbers. I scored 27 goals, I had 11 assists. If you're a goalkeeper, I had 10 clean sheets. I had an average of eight saves per game. Things like that that are actual numbers that they can see or will just help them make a better decision overall. The amount of times that a player has messaged me and said, coach, please trust me, I'm a good player, all I need is a chance, I'll prove it to you, I won't let you down. Everybody does that. And no coach is gonna be able to trust you because they're spending all of their money and they're putting their reputation on the line to try and get you. So they need to know without a doubt that they've made the best decision at the end of the day. So tip number five, last one is, Make sure that you're talking to multiple schools. So even if you are not interested in actually attending those schools, the thing about it is that the coaching world and the soccer world, especially division one, it's actually a lot smaller than you think. I know there's hundreds of division one schools out there, but a lot of the coaches actually know each other and they know each other quite well because they've played against each other for multiple years. And a lot of division one coaches, if you look in their bios, they've been at that program for a long time. They know a lot of people. So going back to making those connections and being a salesman and advertising yourself, getting your name in the back of those coaches' heads, if you've been talking to multiple schools, specifically in the same conference, you'll notice that coaches don't like to only beat each other on the field, but they're also very excited when they can beat each other in the recruiting game. If there's a player that multiple schools are looking at and one coach manages to get that player to commit and come play for their school, it's like a moral victory versus all those other coaches. If you are contacting all these coaches and they all know that you're talking to them, they're gonna try and compete. They're gonna start showing a little bit more interest because they know that if they end up passing on you, that could come back to hurt them on the field. So the last thing that they want is knowing that they could have had a player, but they decided that they didn't wanna take him and another school took him within the same conference and then that school ends up beating them in the regular season or in conference championships or whatever. So getting your name to multiple schools, multiple coaches, it's gonna make you more of a wanted player overall. So think about that and also remember that even though the school that you wanted to attend maybe doesn't want you, there might be another school that even though, like I said, you didn't have them as a school that you wanted to attend, that might actually end up being a good backup. And I've seen it happen a lot where players end up going to those schools when they originally didn't even have them in their list of their top three or their top five schools. So don't put all your eggs in one basket, have multiple options, and you might actually be surprised when you narrow down your list and finally pick a school. So that's five tips 
tips right there that you can use when you're thinking about how you can obtain a scholarship. Not only obtaining a scholarship, but also getting your foot in the door to play Division One. But I think that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, if you found this information useful and you found it informative, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. That really helps out the channel. And if you guys haven't subscribed already, I don't know what you guys are waiting for. I'm posting a lot of videos like this a lot more frequently than I have before. So make sure you guys are subscribed. Hit that notification bell so you guys can be informed and notified of when I post my next video. That's it for me, guys. Until next time. And adios, muchachos.